So let's add our second cam into our assembly right here. So the nice thing about doing everything in CAD, doing it all on the computer, is the copy and paste button. Um, since you're going to be reusing assemblies, or reusing parts in assemblies so often, what you can do, there's a nice little shortcut. If I just come over here, find the part on the left menu over there. Uh, if you don't know where it is, you just click on it, and it'll highlight it. Just over here in the menu, just click and drag it over to the screen over here, and it will make a copy. So if I want another axle, come over here. Just drag it over there. Bring another box, bring it over there. So it's very easy to just bring over as many parts as you need, and it'll make copies of it. I'm going to undo all that. All right, so let's bring another cam over. So I've got a cam. I'm going to click and drag, bring it over. And so we need to do a couple things. I've got a just loose part over here. We've got to stick it through the dowel. We've got to set the distance left and right, and we've got to lock in the angle. So let's do some constraints for that right there. So first, let's stick it on this dowel here, stick it on the shaft right there. So I'm going to let's do an insert constraint for that one. I'm going to right click and hit constrain. I'm going to go to insert. And I'm going to say this circle right here is going to be inserted onto this shaft right here. And you can see by default, it kind of stuck it on the end there. If I hit the aligned, it just makes it a little bit different. Um, while we're here, we can use this offset to set it left and right. So let's say we want it three inches that way. I'm going to hit three. That went the wrong way. So I could either come over here and say negative three, and it'll stick it that way. Or I can, this solution right here, I can flip that, and that'll stick it that way. All right, so if I do it at three, it's going to be touching that one. Let's put a little gap in there. Let's put oh, two inches, two and a half. There we go. You know, whatever yours is, you can always adjust it later on. Because when I hit OK or hit Apply, then hit OK. Uh, when I come over here, drop this down on the menu. There's that offset. So if I need to change it later, I can do that. Now you'll notice the parts will go through each other. Inventor, this is a computer. Parts can magically go through each other like that, like they can't in real life. We're not there yet at making it all perfectly like real life. So this is where you can just kind of eyeball it, take a look, do some guess and check with it. All right. So this one is now stuck on the shaft. Now I need to lock in that angle. So what I'm going to do is do, do, do. Let's, so I could lock it in with this angle right here, but let's actually lock it in to this one right here. Let's offset them at 90 degrees from each other. So I'm going to come back over here to my first one, which you'll notice the part numbers over here. So it says cam, and this is the first copy of it. Cam, that's my second copy of it. So let's actually make that line visible again. So I'm going to come over to that sketch two, turn on that visibility. And so now, I've got the line on this one, the line on that one. Let's turn it this way. And let's lock those in so they're 90 degrees from each other. So I'm going to use a constraint. I know that's an angle constraint. My first line is this one. My second line is this one. And I want an angle, a directed angle. And let's make that, what did I say, 90 degrees. Hit apply. So now, whatever this one is, this one will be 90 degrees from that. So when I rotate it, now they're offset a little bit. If I wanted them the same, I would just set that angle as 0 degrees. And now they're locked in together. So let's put it at 90 degrees. All right. So that's a really easy way to make copies of parts. And then if I want to, I can turn those little lines off again. So come over to sketch two, turn off that visibility. You can also, if I had it on and I wanted to make it disappear, if I go down to the bottom, 
open up my sketch or my part right here I can right click and turn off visibility and maybe save it yeah didn't do it anyway you know how to do it so now I've got two cams now let's what should we do next let's poke some holes in the top up here alright so I want to know exactly where I need to put two holes up on the top to put the pieces. So I got a piece right here. If I put it off to the side, it's not going to work. Right? So it's got to be directly under that cam. So that way it's lined up. Okay. Right. Because I've already made those parts, I could sit and I could try to figure it out, do all the math, do all the, everything, but wouldn't it be easier just to like look at it and drill a hole into it? So let's do that. So what do I want to do? I want to edit my box right here. So I'm going to right click and go to edit. If you have it open down at the bottom, exit it because it may or may not let you edit it if it's still open. So I right click, I edit, and you can see that the other parts that are not in the box have kind of grayed out. Remember, you can always go to return to return back to everything. But I want to put some holes up at the top, and I, but I need to know where to put the holes. And that's where we're going to use that project geometry. So let's go to make a new sketch. So I'm going to hit start 2D sketch. I'm going to click on the top of my box right here. And I want to know where to put that. So I'm going to hit this project geometry, and I'm going to project a couple things. I'm going to project where the shaft is, and I'm going to project where those cams are. So I'm going to hit project geometry. First thing I'm going to click on is where this line is for the shaft. All right. So now I know that those holes, or this is where the shaft is, so the holes need to be somewhere around there. I'm also going to click on the left and right sides of my cams. And you can see when I click on it, it shows up up top here. So it's like if I could look through it, that's where that one is. There. So I can see where my two cams are. They're currently right here, and I can see where my shaft is. So I need, I can use that bit of information. So let's put a hole, let's put one right here directly on top and let's put one a little bit offset. So I'm going to grab a circle. I'm just going to put one right here. Click. And let's make the diameter, let's make this a quarter inch, 0.25. And let's put one over here. Right here, 0.25. Again, make it your design. This is just an example. I'm just doing this so they're offset. You could put them right next to each other or in line with each other if you wanted to. All right, and let's let's put those in the middle of the cam. So I know the cam is three quarters of an inch. So half of three quarters is three eighths. So I'm going to use my dimension, and from this line to the center of my circle is 3 eighths. So 0.375. And I'm going to hit, watch what happens when I hit finish. So I'm going to, well, I'm going to hit finish. I'm going to extrude that hole. So that circle and that circle. I'm going to go down. All right, so I've got a hole right there. The hole should be directly above that cam. I'm going to hit return. Now, if you'll notice, this little adaptive circle showed up. These little arrows, this red and blue circular arrows, and that says that it's adaptive. What adaptive means is that one part is relying on another part for something. So because of where that cam is, we said, hey, we want it 3 eighths of an inch from the edge of that cam. So if I move this cam, so I'm, I don't know which one it is, I'm going to click on it. I can see over on the left it's this one. And 
if I change this to, let's say, one inch, you'll notice the hole moved along with it. So because that hole is tied in with this cam, and it's adaptive, wherever that cam is, that hole is going to follow it. So let's put this back to where it was. I think it was three. Oh, no, it was two. But you can notice that hole moves around with it. That's really useful because if you make changes along the way, you don't have to change one thing, then change another thing, then change another thing. It'll all be kind of tied together. All right. Do, do. If you want to, you can go back to the box, edit, and you know, edit that sketch that just showed up and move those holes around if you need to. All right. If you don't want it locked into place, like if I want that hole to be stay right there and I want to move that, if I want to turn off the adaptive feature, I can right click it and over here where it says adaptive, right where my face is again. So if I right click it, adaptive, if I turn that off, now the little red and blue circle go away. Now those parts are independent from each other. So if I change one, it won't change the other one. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so I've got, let's see, what do we have now? We've got our shaft, we've got our two cams, we've got the holes on the top. Now what do we need? We need some dowels to put our little things in, our followers and everything. All right. So let's do that part next.